You know, one of the things that fascinates me most about flint napping are the stones themselves. Uh, I want to show you a couple stones that came from the same origin, but they're both very different. As you can see in this picture, fall is coming here to western New York with goldenrod. When you see the goldenrod, you know that fall is not far away. So what I have is the results of my napping yesterday. I had to go to our local farmer's market this weekend and do a little demonstration of flint napping. I like to do this every year to promote our stone tool show we have in Letchworth Park. Well, during that two hours I was there, I started a couple of bifaces from big chunks of material. And I chose to bring them home and finish them uh, in the quiet place of my man cave. And the first one that I used was a piece of basalt. Now what's interesting about basalt, I hope this shows up well here, it's kind of really, really pretty stuff. The basalt is nothing more than magma that flowed from a volcano. So both materials that I want to show you here were born of fire. These were extruded out of the earth when the volcanoes erupted. And this is a result of lava that cooled very slowly. So it formed larger grains and crystals. So it's, it's a much coarser material. So it can still be napped just like anything else. It's just maybe a little more difficult, a little harder, just because of the grain structure. But this is a result of when lava cools quickly. Now, for some reason, this may have uh, been shot out of the volcano and maybe the globs of lava landed in cold, icy water, ice, snow, whatever. But when it did, it caused the magma to cool rapidly. And when it cools rapidly, this is what it forms. It's a very glassy material. And I don't know how well you can see through that, but it's absolutely beautiful material. There's some lines in there. This is Midnight, midnight Lace Obsidian again. And uh, I was quite happy that both of these bifaces turned out well and uh, survived all the strikes I hit with my moose billet on it. This was pretty much all abo, both these points. I did use a copper nail in a pressure flaker that was made out of a antler tine to do this. That's my typical pressure flaking tool. So here is a result of two materials with the same origin. Uh, both born of fire, but both had different cooling temperatures to produce two different types of material. I find this fascinating, and I, I hope you did too.